In this example, I will show you how to find the input impedance of a terminated line. Um, let's consider this example here. We have a transmission line with 50 ohms impedance and a line length of 0.2 lambda. And the line is loaded with a, a complex impedance of 100 plus 100 J ohms. When we do that, we can determine now the input impedance of the line, which is the impedance measured between these two pins here, the so-called Z-in input impedance. Okay, how to find the input impedance? Well, first we mark in the Smith chart our load impedance. From the load impedance, we can read off the gamma 2. Then we transform using our known uh, rotation trick, the gamma 2 to a gamma 1 at the input. And at this point, we can read off the Z in value impedance. Okay, let's do that step by step. We have an input impedance, uh, a load impedance, which is 100 plus 100 J ohms. When we normalize this impedance, this becomes 2 plus 2 J ohms because we have to divide by 50 ohms. So this point 2 plus 2 J ohms I marked already, which is here, a real part is 2 imaginary part is 2j which is this band where they intersect this is my point zl okay now uh, by inserting that line this point will rotate around the center to a new point somewhere here depending on the length of the line that's the transformation of the line impedance how do we uh, figure out the rotation and the length of the rotation well, first we have to find the starting angle of our rotation. For that, I uh, draw a line here. And, uh, oops, so. And this line looks something like this. So, this line goes through the goes through the center, uh, starts in the center and goes through my point. So now from on the outermost ring, we can read off our starting angle and the starting angle is measured in lambdas uh, for simplicity, for convenience. You can see that here that it's labeled lambdas towards generator. That means we start here and then we move towards the generator. That means we go clockwise. Okay, so what's my starting angle? Let's see. I have to look at this value here um, and we see this value is a little bit less than 0 0.21 so, um, so I prepared this here already so we start with an angle of about 0 0.209 lambda now we have to add 0.2 lambda to it which is the length of my line in order to get our final value which is 0 0.409 lambda so, so. Mm -hmm. um, so we start at 0 0.209 add our 0.22 lambda and end at the, at the new angle of 0 0.409 lambda so that means we have to draw a second line which I do so here and this line ends at the point here where it is O point, and I mark that point here, oops. Uh, where I'm at O point 409 lambda. And uh, so, which is somewhere here, no? So end point O point 409, we can read off at the outer ring and we get that stop value. So, so the rotation is around the center. That means we can take a compass now and I hope I can get this going here. It's kind of tricky, yeah. Um, and draw a circle. The circle goes through my point and this circle intersects with my new angle and that's going to be my final point, my Z-in. No? So that's this point here. So. And, oops, let me make a different color so you can see that better. So, um, so where is this point located? Well, it's at 0.6 imaginary part, and real part is 
0 0.3, 0 0.31, 0 0.32, something like that. So actually, um, so what I can do now is I can uh, maybe mark that here and say z in is equal to 0. Point, what did I say? 0. 0.32 minus 0.6j and I have to get rid of the boundary here so so this is my z in value now my normalized z in value I have to say so to be precise I should put a little prime in here no so my normalized z in is 0.32 minus 0.6j and this we can denormalize now and we can plug it in here into our final solution which is uh, this times 50 is uh, 32 divided by 16 minus um, 0 0.6 is um, 60 is divided by this, uh, minus 30 so we have j so we have 16 minus 30 j ohms that's my input impedance of that transmission line so we can find that without using a complex calculator or anything, just using the Smith chart. Um, one little hint, when you do not have a compass, you can of course find that uh, point. Let's say I don't have my, my circle here. I cannot draw a circle. You can find that point by just uh, using your uh, triangle or your ruler. And measure this length here, which is 5.1 centimeters. Go around and you put in the value down here where it's also 5.1 centimeters and that way you can also find it. No. So that would be an alternative way of uh, you doing it without a compass. Uh, let's double check that. Um, again, I prepared that here. What we have to do is we have to find now a couple of values. First we need Z0 in Python, that not is 50 ohms. Then we need our load impedance, which I also prepared here already, which is 100 plus 100 J. Then we need the length of the line, the electrical length of the line in radians. Well, what is, so my my electrical length is beta L, called beta, called beta times L, so I just call the variable beta L. The line is 0 0.2 lambda long. That means it's 0 0.2 of 2 pi in terms of angles. No? Uh, 1 lambda would be a rotation by 2 pi and the beta uh, L of 0 0.2 lambda is 0 0.2 times 2 pi. So now I have to get the big formula for finding input impedance which is this one um, Z0 times and then this big fraction blah 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 over blah 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 that's the formula you find in the lecture notes and then the formula sheet and when you do that I hopefully get my Z in which is 16.2 minus 29.8 ohms. And we see from the Smith chart, we are very, very close to that solution. So this uh, rotation trick tells you how to derive the input impedance of a transmission line when it's loaded by a certain impedance. Once again, mark your load impedance, mark your starting point at the outer ring, add the length of the line, rotate by the length of the line to the new point, read off the new Z value, and that's it. Um, one thing you have to keep in mind, you always have to normalize your load impedance to the line impedance. So you cannot, when the line impedance now is 80 ohms, you cannot normalize to 50 ohms, because the trick only works when everything is normalized to the impedance of the transmission line. Okay, thank you. That summarizes our um, input impedance calculations and see you later.